This podcast is going to start a new series, a mini-series, called The Philosophy of Meat Trapping. I run a website called meattrapper.com where I explain why I trap and how I trap for meat. Now when you hear the word trapper, you immediately think of fur trapping, the old style mountain man fur trapper. Most people today are surprised to learn that people still trap for fur, but they do. The vast majority of trappers are fur trappers. They trap with the objective of selling the pelts for money. These guys are trying to catch as many animals as they can within the confines of the trapping season. There's another type of trapper known as an ADC trapper. ADC stands for Animal Damage Control. This trapper doesn't trap for fur, but rather to remove problem animals. Now this could be anything from a squirrel that has taken up residence in somebody's attic to controlling beaver for a timber company with tens of thousands of acres of timberland. The common theme is that they're getting paid to remove the animal. They're not interested in the fur. My background in philosophy of trapping is different from either of those two. By nature, I'm a prepper. I believe that our nation, our culture, our societal values, our economy, and our currency are being destroyed. I believe that Americans will see a continued deterioration in their standard of living. I believe our infrastructure and our services will continue to, deter to deteriorate and that we will continue to lose our freedoms and personal liberty. I believe our children and our grandchildren will inherit a country that is a nuclear armed, bankrupt, third world cesspool. Now given that those are my beliefs, it's incumbent upon me to prepare for the future the best that I can. One must prepare morally, psychologically, spiritually, intellectually, and physically. As my preps for the future have matured, I realize that I could grow vegetables and I could store grain, but that meat, especially fresh meat, presented a problem. I could buy freeze-dried meat, but I'd need a second mortgage to afford a reasonable supply and even then I had no guarantee that it wasn't laced with hormones, antibiotics, pink slime, and everything else. I live in a typical suburban neighborhood, so raising livestock is not an option for me. And even if I could, raising meat's an expensive proposition. You have to feed the animal, provide medical care, house it, and then comply with any applicable laws. You're responsible for the animal from cradle to grave. Now merge this reality with the popular conception of a lot of fantasy survivalist types out there. That is, they're going to take some picture wire or boot laces and trap some food. Anybody that's seen what a coon can do to a modern aircraft cable snare, or seen how an animal can escape from a modern foothold trap knows just how outlandish this type of thinking is. There are a lot of videos on YouTube where people show primitive traps made from picture wires, sticks, rocks, or whatever. But precious few of those videos show any catches, and there's a reason why. So I was faced with a quandary. How to secure a source of meat for my family, come what may. The more my thought process matured, the more I realized that the collapse was not an event that would happen suddenly, but rather the collapse is a process that has already started and is ongoing. It's a slow motion collapse, like the melting of a glacier. We are living the collapse as I speak. The price of food continues to climb. We see the evidence all around us. Restaurants cut every corner they can as portions become smaller, filler ingredients rise, and quality declines. At the grocery store we see boxes getting smaller, portions getting smaller, anything to try and avoid raising prices and to give the illusion of normalcy. I was in Walmart the other day. A 
pack of thick sliced bacon was nine dollars. Nine dollars. Ground beef, and that is the hormone-filled, pink slime fortified type, is now averaging three dollars and sixty cents a pound nationwide. Of course, the government excludes food from the inflation statistics, so there is no inflation according to the traders in Washington. In the meantime, we have 40 million Americans on food stamps who depend on government credit cards to eat. The situation is unsustainable, and we all know it. Deep down, we know the stock market is manipulated for the benefit of the rich. While we print money out of thin air to buy votes from people who can't feed themselves. Our industry has been shipped overseas. There are few good jobs left, and the jobs that are left demand skill sets that our government schools are incapable of producing because it's not fair to actually fail students who don't perform. The result is a situation where the cost of good, healthy food is climbing out of reach of many Americans. Hamburger Helper, Sugar Smacks, and Cheetos are killing us. So my solution was simple. I decided to catch my food. I decided to become what my friend, professional trapper Clint Locklear calls a free-range, organic, all-natural meat farmer. Mother Nature produces the animal, feeds it, calls the sick, and I simply step in and harvest a portion of the remaining population. I don't have to raise, feed, or provide care for the animal. I simply have to catch it. So enough of the moralizing, preaching, and soapbox. Let's talk numbers, dollars and cents. I live in the Deep South. This affects every trapping equation for me. A beaver pelt from northern Canada brings a hell of a lot more money than a beaver pelt from Alabama. Now it takes the same amount of time to catch, skin, and board the pelt regardless of where it comes from. But the difference is, is that one brings a lot more money than the other. Now I won't bore you with the details, but I can tell you by the time I catch a beaver or a coon, I skin it, I flush it, I board it, I protect it against our high temperatures and humidity that we have throughout the winter, that I'm doing good to make minimum wage by selling furs. Now subtract the cost of lure, traps, wire, accessories, gas, waders, gloves, connectors, and tools, and it's extremely difficult to turn a profit fur trapping in the deep south. Now it can be done, but you have to know what you're doing and you have to be serious about it. Now let's factor in the fact that I'm what's known as a hobby trapper or a weekend trapper. That means I have a high stress demanding corporate job. I have a family. I have outside interest and commitments. I simply can't run a trap line before or after work every day. My weekend trap line consists of taking off early on a Friday, setting a dozen or so, set, uh, or so sets, running a check on Saturday, adding to those sets, and then running a final check on Sunday, and then pulling the line for the week. So how do I turn that into feeding my family and making it pay? It's simple. The meat is worth more than the fur to me. Let's break it down by the numbers. Let's say I catch a beaver. I skin that beaver, flesh him, and board him. After all is said and done, I might get $20 for that beaver pelt if the market's good, if there are no holes in the pelt, it's a good sized pelt, etc., etc. Now that's $20 for a lot of hard, dirty work. Now let's look at the meat. On an average beaver, I can get an average of five pounds of boned out, cleaned, trimmed, ground meat. If I leave the meat bone in, it's a lot more. Now consider that grass fed beef sells about sells for about seven dollars a pound down here. That means the meat from my beaver is worth at least thirty five dollars, 
while the fur is worth 20. Now if we factor in time, it takes me about 15 minutes to skin and quarter a beaver, while it takes me about an hour to process the beaver for fur. Think about that. I can work for 15 minutes and make $35, or I can work an hour and make 20 The choice is simple for me. Now let's delve a bit deeper. Let's say that I process the fur and I sell it for $20. Now that $20 is income and I have to pay taxes on it. So now I take what's left after taxes to the store and I buy hamburger. And I pay taxes again on my purchase. So I was taxed when I made the money and I was taxed when I spent the money. So how much of that 20 bucks did I actually retain? And how hard did I have to work for it? Are you starting to see my point? So now let's consider the meat trapper way. I catch that same beaver. I skin it, and I cut it into quarters in about 15 minutes. I take the pelt, and rather than scraping, fleshing, and boarding it, I cut it into scraps and put it into the freezer. The beaver pelt scraps with the feet and flesh attached makes awesome turtle bait for my snapping turtle traps come this summer, which produces even more free meat. I take the beaver tails, I chunk them up, and I make tail oil, which is an excellent trapping lure. I'll take the beaver meat itself and clean it up and put it in the freezer. Now since I haven't sold anything, I have no income that can be taxed. Since I'll be eating that meat, I won't be going to the store to buy anything, so I won't be paying tax on that purchase. I also won't be buying lure or bait for my turtle traps because I have that in my freezer already. So I avoid the unfair double taxation. There's no income, no sale, no sales tax. There is just the end result of food in my freezer bait and lure on the shelf. I completely legally avoid feeding the government. And one final thought. In my state there is no closed season on beaver. There's no limit and no license is required to even trap them. By picking up a paying beaver removal job I actually get paid to put meat in my freezer. Think about it. Getting paid to put grass-fed steroid free meat in the freezer is a pretty good deal and I can do that all year not just during the winter months give it some thought now in my next installment I'll talk a little more about what animals are good to trap for meat and what animals are good to trap for money and why until then remember that we all have different situations and what's right for one man may be wrong for another I'm simply sharing with you what I do and why. It's up to each and every man to decide for himself what is right for him. Thanks for listening and have a good evening.